But I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to tell you about the fight against corruption that's going on around the world, and also to ask that you should also join in the fight against corruption in the world. Because if we're going to fight corruption, the very heart of the, what we're trying to achieve is good governance. And good governance, and you've been talking about transparency here today, the heart of good governance is transparency because remember that government serves the people. That is you. You do not serve the government. They're there to provide order in society on your behalf in order that you may live in peace and tranquility. Okay, sorry. And that your neighbor can also live in peace and tranquility. That's the role of government. Now, I developed a little chart to kind of set it out so we can understand where it's at. The bottom triangle of the, the, the hourglass is uh, the service triangle. This is what government does. And we as the people, of course, are held accountable by our government. We have to pay our taxes on time or the tax collector will be knocking on our door. We have to pay our speeding tickets or somebody else will come knocking on our door. Our restaurants are clean and safe to eat in because health inspectors make sure that they meet the standards. There are a myriad of people in society ensuring that society works on your behalf. They hold you accountable. And who holds them accountable? Of course, they are held accountable by their ministers who want to see that their department does the right thing. And who holds the ministers accountable? Of course, here in Chile, it is the president. Now, for many years here in Chile, that was the top of the line. Because the question has always to be asked, who holds the president accountable? And as you can see by the chart, it is the people. First of all, the parliament. The Congress, your elected representatives, have the responsibility to ensure that your government acts with honesty, probity, transparency, is effective in delivering the services that you would like to enjoy as people. That is the role of Parliament to ensure that the people's wishes are translated and government implements them. And how is Parliament held accountable? And I think we have two deputies here. No, no, one, two some the people from Parliament here today, how are they held accountable? Well, this is where the transparency comes in because you are the people at the top as on the governance triangle and as you can see, you need and must have an independent media. The independent media conveys the information from government to you. They have to have the authority and the access to the information in government. So they can tell you what is going on and they can make up, you can make up your mind as to what, if you like what they're doing or not. On the other side, of course, there is civil society. We can organize any way we want. We can organize with the church bells that I hear. We can organize in churches and civil society groups and governance groups and family groups any way we want to organize in a free and democratic society we can do so and as we organize we develop a collective voice and government should listen to that collective voice civil society plays a major role in an open and democratic society and then in between the independent media and civil society there is that in French, we call it la bête noir. In English, it's the black beast. And that's the political parties that are a very difficult institution to control, even in democratic societies. But political parties must have a level playing field. And I hear today about lack of transparency in how they raise their money, lack of transparency in how they spend their money and this has to be resolved because political parties are the most difficult thing to control because through political parties people rise up and 
achieve power in the country. And when they achieve power, they tend to write the rules for themselves rather than for the people at large. And history is littered with examples of revolutions where the people depose the dictator only to find a new one has taken over. Political parties need to be able to compete, like sports. One team versus another team with equal rules, everybody understands, same game, same rules. Nothing hidden. That is how we have to control political parties. But I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on around the world. Yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, I was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico at the B20 summit and the B20 G20 summit. And I heard about how the World Bank is now enforcing discipline on contractors who bribe people around the world. It used to be that the World Bank didn't even acknowledge that corruption existed. Today, if you use World Bank money for bribery, you will find that you'll be disbarred and you won't be doing any work for the World Bank. The private sector were telling us about how effective enforcement of the laws was the best methodology to fight corruption. We heard about procurement. Governments, huge amount of procurement, ranging from, in democratic countries, as low as 13 to 15 percent of GDP is purchased by government, ranging in uh, other countries as high as 70 percent of the GDP is government purchases with taxpayers' money. The opportunity for fraud and bribery and illegality is wide open. And the only way that can be controlled is through transparency. Today we have modern processes with computers where we can have electronic bidding. We can provide standardization and homogenization of the products that governments buy. We provide competition. And when we have competition and a fair playing field that is equal to all, then we find that the system works better. Mexico told us about how they got rid of 600 regulations on procurement and replaced it with two manuals to make it simple. We heard from Siemens, the large international engineering conglomerate. I don't know if you were aware, but they were fined 1.24 billion euros for bribery. That's B with a billion. Now they're one of the cleanest companies in the world and they say clean business is good business. And now that they don't do bribery, they find business is much more profitable because they now play by the rules of competition. In fact, the vice president even admitted that Siemens is not in the technology business anymore because they thought they could buy their way in through bribery they didn't have innovation, and in such an innovative industry, they were so far behind they had to abandon it because they thought they could buy it with bribes. Bribery shouldn't pay. Organization for Economic Development, the OECD in Paris, has the Anti-Bribery Convention, which is considered the gold standard today. And in the UK, their anti-corruption legislation says that if someone is caught offering or taking a bribe, or offering a bribe, the corporation will be prosecuted too unless the corporation can prove that they have a full, complete policies that is applied every day in the fight against bribery and corruption. We police and we prosecute corporations too. And, of course, my own country, Canada, is not exempt where we have a, a very large investigation going into a multinational engineering firm that uh, has bribery allegations against it. The UN Convention Against Corruption. 160 countries around the world has signed on and is now the working model for the world. And it has a review mechanism that is now being, it has been developed, it is being refined, with assessment and reporting so that we are forcing through transparency and self-declaration countries to assess themselves 
on how they're doing on corruption and the standards are being raised all the time. Hewlett Packard in the private sector now requires its 125,000 distributors all around the world to take anti-corruption training every year. That's over a million people are being trained in the fight against corruption. And I heard from one NGO, the name is UNO, one, that's the name of the, of the NGO. And they say that action speaks louder. That's all, not louder than words, just action speaks louder. They have three million members committed to development and the fight against corruption. This is what is going on around the world. The G20 is engaged, the B20 is engaged, private sectors are engaged, NGOs are engaged. They're all working for a better world, but there's also the bad news because it can't always be good news. There are countries, for example, Nigeria, rich in oil, people live on less than a dollar a day. They estimate that they've lost between 400 and 500 billion dollars in the last 20 years through corruption. People live in abject poverty and one dollar can save one life from preventable diseases such as AIDS and so on. These are the dreadful things that we still have to address. There are thousands of people are dying by violence and by hunger and starvation and disease in this world every day, all because of bad governance. And bad governance exists because there is no transparency where we cannot find out what the government is doing. People need to know what the government is doing. Women and children are raped and murdered throughout Africa and elsewhere around the world every day. Daughters are raped. May not be your daughter, but it could be your daughter. And think, what are you doing about it? What is your government doing about it? So I speak to the parliamentarians, those who are elected to lead and to govern society. They should be at the forefront of fighting corruption, not part of corruption. And I saw the slide that the previous gentleman pointed that the parliamentarians do not have any further to fall when it comes to mistrust. Only one way they can go. And I hope that they rise to the challenge and say, we are going to be part of the fight against corruption. We are going to deliver transparency to the people. We are going to earn their trust. We are going to demonstrate that Chile can be a great country in this world, can be a leader in this world, because that is their responsibility. That is what you elected them to do. But when I go to meetings, such as the B20, such as the uh, B20, the G20 that I've just been at, I find governments are there, some governments are there. I find the NGOs are there, business are there, the multilateral organizations are there, but I don't find parliaments. I don't find congresses. They're sitting back waiting for someone else to take the lead when in fact they should be at the forefront. And if you want a great country, it's up to you to demand leadership from your parliamentarians, your congressmen and your senators. And that is why, that is why we started the organization GOPAC, Par Parliamentarians Against Corruption. Here in Chile, I understand that Senator Lorraine wants to start a chapter of this organization. This is about parliamentarians coming together to fight corruption in their Congress and in their legislature. You have given them constitutional authority to do so. You should demand that they exercise it on your behalf. Because when they don't do that, your society fails. When parliament fails, government will fail. When government fails, your society will fail. 
So this is about building a coalition all around the world of parliamentarians who can help each other and support each other in difficult times when governments are corrupt to say that the job can be done. Because when I look around the world, there's one thing that I have found. I've never found anybody, nobody, that ever voted for poverty. Nobody voted for corruption to steal their livelihood. And therefore, the parliamentarians, the congressmen, the senators, those who were elected to serve should start ensuring that they do serve. It is not their right to steal the money, take it away, put it in a foreign bank account, and leave the people who elected them destitute. Transparency is the, under, the bottom line the more that you know what your government is doing, the more they will feel the obligation to do the right thing. Because there are two ways to stop corruption. One, people have to think they're going to get caught. And number two, when they are caught, they are not going to like the price. That is what you should be demanding at election time. That is what you should be demanding from your politicians. And when they start to deliver that because you demand it from them, your prosperity in this country will grow. And I challenge your parliamentarians, your elected representatives to do that. And I thank you all for the opportunity of being here. Appreciate it. Muchas gracias.